I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Welcome to the Narrow West Christ for all nations. Let us pray. Thank you for another opportunity to learn at your feet. Lord, we give you glory and praise. Thank you because your word giveth life and understanding to the simple. We ask that your word will be released to us even this moment. Lord, we live in a world where people lack understanding. And because people lack your word, they are perishing in their millions. Help us, those of us who have come to acknowledge the truth, to grow in the knowledge of the Lord and in the grace of Christ. Lord, fill us with your word. Help me to dish out your word with divine wisdom. Lord, you are the originator of the truth. You are also the truth yourself. By your spirit, speak your word to us. Help me not to speak to your children alone, but to speak to myself also. Because we all shall to soon stand in front of you to give account. Let your word purify our hearts. Sanctify us by the truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we are considering the topic today, a topic that says, Who rules the world? God or Satan? This is going to be in form of Bible study. Uh, in form of teaching, I want to really take my time to explain this. And we have about 15 Bible verses to read. <laughs> this is what I call it. Teaching. Uh, the teaching ministry is left alone to perish. But God will never allow it to perish. Because that is where people get the truth. Who actually rules the world? Is God the one that is in charge of this world? Or Satan or both? Who is in charge of the world? As we look at the Bible, we will know who is really in charge of this world. Well, as believers, we need to equip ourselves with knowledge. Knowledge is very, very important. So, I encourage you to go through this message until you have assimilated everything. Go through it, listen to it once, twice, three times, and also share it. If you have not subscribed to this channel, I beg you, please subscribe. Those of you who are watching on Hosanna E.E. E. David, my personal channel, please also subscribe. Don't forget to share this video. Like and comment so that it can help the algorithm to YouTube machine to suggest our videos to other viewers. May the Lord bless as many who have been sharing our videos and supporting this ministry. In Jesus' name, let's go ahead straight into the message. I picked this test because it has a lot to say about Satan's position in the world right now. Luke chapter 4, 5, 6, and 7. And the devil taking him up, that means taking Jesus, he took Jesus, and the devil taking him up into an high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. This is Satan himself talking to his maker, Jesus Christ. And he told him, you see, all these things I've just showed you, I am going to give you all of them and the glory of them all. 
for it had been delivered unto me. For that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. Jesus did not rebuke him that, Oh, you liar, you father of lies. He didn't rebuke him. Rather, he resisted the temptation. He did not say, Oh, why are you lying? Who gave you all these things? Oh, you can give them out. He didn't rebuke him like that. The Lord didn't tell him, Oh, who give you? Who gave you all these things? He didn't say so. Jesus never doubted his ability to give wealth. He never doubted his ability to give the glory of these things and the power of these things to anybody. He didn't doubt it. This is how Satan has taken a lot of people up and gave them as much as they need at the expense of their souls. And they are being used against the kingdom of God. I want to make you understand something that Satan has a lot to do with the leadership of this world right now. He has a lot to do with the leadership of this world right now. And we as God's children must be wise who understands these things. Revelation chapter 12, 7-9 says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought against his angels, and it prevailed not. Neither was there was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan that deceived the whole world. That deceived, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. This is Bible. So we are told in Revelation chapter 12 that Satan was in heaven. And because of his pride, he was cast out and he used his tail to wipe one third of the stars of heaven. This one third of the stars of heaven represents the one third of the whole angels of God in heaven. He was able to deceive one out of every three. The kingdom of God was divided. And from that moment, a kingdom emanated out of God's kingdom. And that kingdom is a kingdom of darkness. So from that time, there has been these two kingdoms that have been existing. One on earth and another one in heaven and on earth. Let's move on. I will try to be as fast as I can. May God help me. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28, God created man in his own image and handed over this planet to man. He also created two trees. He created the knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he also created the tree of life. And these two trees were in the middle of the garden, the garden of Eden. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, what I understand, according to my own interpretation, is a symbol of the existence of good and evil. Existence of God, good, and the existence of Satan the devil, evil. And that tree is forbidden and to my own understanding to my own interpretation 
I may be wrong, but this is what I believe. Is that that tree of the knowledge of good and evil is a symbol of the presence of the evil one on earth. What brought about the destruction of the world that existed, that left a foundation, left darkness, and left water on the surface, uh, on the deep? What brought about that destruction? I believe the world that existed before this Adamic world was destroyed when Satan and his fallen angels were driven down from heaven. This is what I believe. And God had to create a tree and call it the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't touch it. If you touch it, you are going to die. You are like me, you don't die. But the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. But those who die don't belong to the kingdom of God. Because with God is eternity. There's nothing like death. But with the devil, there is death. So, so long as you eat of the tree of life, you will never die. But if you eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. And in Genesis chapter 3, the devil came and deceived the woman. And the woman deceived the man. And they both ate of that tree. And they were driven out. And from that moment, there was the transfer of authority. The authorities that was dedicated to Adam and Eve, they lost it. Remember, um, I think I should explain a little bit. Look at the curses on the earth. God cursed the ground. And from that moment, when the Bible says that thorns and thistles will come out of the ground, it's that thorns and thistles represent a lot of things too. Wasp, African killer bees, these were never to hunt, hunt man. They were never to bite man. They were to produce for man's consumption. Um, I mean, the African killer bee was never to bite man. But the moment man sinned, he lost his authority. The crocodile can now feast on man. The lion and the tigers can now feast on men. The bear, the killer bear, can now feast on men. The sharks can now feast on men. This is what the thorns and thistles means. So now, these things are supposed to see you and see eternity inside of you. But now that you have sinned, they will feed on you and kill you. The authority God gave to men shifted. The devil took advantage and took this authority. And this is why he is so bold to come to Jesus Christ. And the devil said, look at verse 6. Luke chapter 4 verse 6. And the devil said unto him, all this power, all this power and the glory of them. I will give, I, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them. When he came to earth, he set up kingdoms. Kingdoms. And the ones he did not set up, he overthrew the kingdoms of men. He overthrew them to a 
very great extent. Listen, Satan had a lot of authority on earth that he was using. He stole it from man. He stole the mandate that was given to man in Genesis chapter 2. He stole it. Let's move on. May the Lord give us true understanding. May the Lord God Almighty give us true understanding. Look at Genesis chapter 5, chapter 3, verse 15. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt be bruise his heel. Immediately this happened, God gave a decree that, oh, you've taken advantage of the ignorance of men because of his disobedience. Now, I am going to put enmity between you and the woman and between you and the seed of the same woman you deceive today. And you shall bruise his heel, and he will crush your head. The head represents Satan's leadership. So when Jesus Christ came, he was met by the same Satan to deceive Jesus Christ. He knew exactly what Jesus Christ came for. To take this power from him. Remember what Jesus Christ said? Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. Therefore. As a result that all power has been given unto me. Power in heaven and on earth. Satan knew that Jesus Christ came to take this power from him. What did he do? Quickly, this is what Satan did. He is a serpent. He is wise. He has corrupt wisdom. When he fell from heaven, God did not take his wisdom from him. He didn't take some of his powers from him. He still retains some of his abilities. He can cause fire to fall from heaven. Look at what happened to Job. Satan caused all those calamities. They, he, he has the ability to manipulate nature to a very great extent. He told Jesus Christ, he showed him the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Listen, Satan wanted to give Jesus a shortcut. If he had bowed down to worship him, he would have introduced the next sentence. The way Adam and Eve fell and handed over the authority, the power to him, he wanted to trick Jesus to bow down. So that Jesus will not take all power from him. Let's look at some of these scriptures. Scriptures to consider about Satan. Please, if you have not listened to the message of last week, I encourage you to listen to it. It will help you to understand today's message. Satan is called the God of this world in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4. The prince of this world. Called, Jesus called him the prince of this world. Who is a prince? Is there anybody called a prince that has no power, that has no authority? But if you, handle, if you are not in the kingdom of a prince, he has no authority over you. You have to be a member of his kingdom first. There are kingdoms in this world. There is a, 
there are two main kingdoms. There is the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of light is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of darkness is the kingdom of Lucifer, who is now called Satan, the devil, the ancient serpent, the dragon. If who is the most powerful king in Nigeria? Um, I don't know. If the most powerful prince in Nigeria travels to the UK or to the US, he becomes like every other person. <laughs> you can see him and bow to him. But in his own kingdom, if you see him and you don't greet him according to tradition, you will be fined. But so long as he moves out of his kingdom, he has no authority over you. He has no power over you. Those who are in the kingdom of God, they have authority. They have power over Satan. Satan is a prince. He's a prince of this world. So if you are of this world, know that Satan has power over you. And he does to you whatsoever he wants. This is why you need to be in the kingdom of God. Last week I talked about submit to God, resist the devil. Please listen to that message is going to help you submit to god resist the devil let's move on he is called the prince of the power of the air ephesians 2 2 ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 the prince of the power of the air he is called he is Referred to as a wicked one under whose power is the world. 1 John 5 19. I like the New King James Version. We know that we are of God. We belong to God. We are in the kingdom of God. And the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. We want don't be of this world because Satan has power over those that are in this world let's move on now after Jesus Christ was promised there have been series of revelations about the time that Jesus will come to crush the head of Satan and set up his kingdom. Remember I said that Satan's head represents his leadership. His power. So, Daniel chapter 2, this is a dream of the king. Daniel 2, 35. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands. We smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the shaft of the summer threshing floors and the wind carried them away and no place was found for them and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth he's talking about kingdoms Jesus Christ coming to set up his kingdom on earth let's move on and how it will crush other kingdoms and it will fill the whole earth and there will be no place for those kingdoms 
And let's look at Daniel chapter 7, 13 to 14. Daniel 7, 13 and 14. I, I saw in the ninth visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and brought near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations and languages should serve him and his dominion is an everlasting dominion. We shall not pass away and his kingdom that we shall not be destroyed. There was a time that a kingdom was handed over to Jesus Christ and he needs to come here to set up that kingdom. And that kingdom was set up in the days of the kings. In the days of the kings. The God of heaven and earth set up a kingdom. And this kingdom is to rule over all other kingdoms. And crush all other kingdoms. So you as a believer, I want you to start seeing the church as a kingdom. The church is a kingdom of Christ. Daniel chapter 2, 44 and 45. And in the days of these kings, these kings, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. The kingdom of Adam and Eve they left it for Satan. This time around, this kingdom that God is setting up will not be left to other people. He will not leave it to other people. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands. And it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God had made known to the king which what shall come to pass thereafter. And the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof sure. So in the days of these kings that the image symbolized, God would set up a kingdom and this kingdom is a kingdom of Jesus Christ the same Daniel in chapter 7 saw the when this kingdom was handed over to Jesus Christ one like the son of man and when Jesus Christ came he adopted that title as his favorite title the son of man. There are some of you who say um, Jesus is God, Jesus is the Holy Spirit, and Jesus is the Son. Yeah, we know the three are one. But the three, they are not just one, they are three persons in one. And those of you who argue, um, you read Daniel chapter 7 and read it downward to verse 14. I saw in the night visions and behold one like the son of man, he came to the ancient of days. The one like the son of man came to the ancient of days and before this passage um before this chapter 13 we see the description of god the father in verse 9 let me read verse 9 daniel 
Okay, let me put it on the screen. Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 and 10 says, I beheld, this is talking about God the Father. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancients of this did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came uh, and came forth from before him. Thousands, th thousands, thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousands, and ten thousand times, ten thousand stood before him, and the judgment was set, and books were opened. Now, we should understand these things. And in verse 13, I saw in the visions of the night, behold, one like the Son of Man came with the class of heaven and came to the ancient of days. I just want to explain a little bit so that we will know that these are three persons in one. Just as I am three persons in one, I am Hosanna the body, Hosanna the spirit, Hosanna the soul. I am three in one. I am created in God's own image and God's own and in God's own likeness. God is three in one, and man is three in one. God's image and likeness. Okay, I just want to make this clear. For those of you who still argue. Now, the kingdom was handed over to Jesus Christ. Let us look at the messages John the Baptist and Jesus Christ preached. Matthew 3, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So he preached repentance, prepared the people's hearts, and baptized them unto repentance. Jesus Christ, too, Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So he was preparing the people for the kingdom that was handed over to him that he has come to set up on earth. It is a kingdom of heaven he brought to the earth. Remember the Lord's prayer in Matthew chapter 6. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Even in the very last prayer, the kingdom has come, the kingdom is expanding, and like the mountain that took over the whole earth, a time is coming that there are different dispensations. A time is coming when the kingdom of the devil shall be totally crushed, and there will be the renovation of the heaven and the earth. And the new Jerusalem will come down from heaven to this earth. That means after, that, that will be after the 1000 reign, the millennial reign of Christ. And after the great judgment, there will be the new heaven and the new earth. And the new Jerusalem, the bride of Christ, will come down from heaven. There will be a new earth. And this kingdom will never be left to other people. Oh, some people are working for God because they feel that they will be paid. We, me, I'm not working for God because I will be paid money. I'm not working for God because I need fame. I'm not working for God because I, 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 I need to uh, establish myself, make a name for myself. I'm working for our kingdom. 
This is our kingdom. And we are fighting. We are soldiers of Jesus Christ. We are fighting for this kingdom. This is a war. This is our kingdom. It is an everlasting kingdom. A lot of people are pastors because of the salary. No! Don't be a man of God because of your pay. Be a man of God. Because have this understanding that this is a kingdom we have been called into. This same message Jesus Christ preached. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And in John chapter 18 verse 36, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight? His angels would have fought for him. That I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Jesus Christ knew very well that his kingdom was not of this world. And about the establishment of this kingdom, look at what he said in Mark chapter 9 verse 1. And he said unto them, this is Jesus saying, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste death, till they have seen the kingdom of God come down with power. Praise God. <laughs> So it was a time after John prepared the heart of these people and Jesus Christ also preached repentance and told them, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. It is at hand. He told them in Mark chapter 9 verse 1 that listen, the kingdom is so near that there are some of you who were standing here that will not die until the see the kingdom of God come down with power. And before he was taken into heaven before he ascended to heaven. He said in Acts for Apostles chapter 8, but he shall receive power. Remember he said the kingdom shall come with power. And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Yes. We are talking about who rules the world. Rulership, leadership is about kingdom. You cannot be a king without having a domain. Kingdom is a domain that has a king. So man was to have dominion. He was the king of this domain called planet earth man was a king of the domain called planet earth he was to have dominion you can't have dominion without having a domain man lost it so jesus has to come since the devil brought his kingdom here and overthrew man. He overthrew mankind. Jesus had to bring his own kingdom. Immediately God released a decree. He promulgated the decree. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. That the seed of the woman. Crushed the head of Satan. Destroyed his leadership. And that is exactly what he did. Please follow this teaching to the end. In Acts of Apostles chapter 2, we see the kingdom come. The kingdom came. Acts of Apostles 2, 1 to 4. Let me read. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, rushing mighty wind this shows the power with which this kingdom came it came physically and it filled all the house 
where they were sitting the upper room and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon the each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance they spoke in other tongues it is a kingdom that we take over the whole earth is taking over the whole earth and it, no language is a barrier to this kingdom so when the kingdom came it is a kingdom that will consume every other nation they spoke in other tongues it is an everlasting kingdom it is a worldwide kingdom the kingdom was sent to rescue the earth that was captured by the evil one. The same kingdom Nebuchadnezzar dreamt about. The same kingdom Daniel saw in a vision in, at, in Daniel chapter 7. The same kingdom came down with power on the day of Pentecost. The church is a kingdom. Listen, those of you who make merchandise of the kingdom of God, if you don't repent, your reward shall be great in hell. Jesus can bring his kingdom to rescue perishing souls and you make money. You make fame of it. You make fame out of it. You pour water and dilute the loss of God. The church that Jesus Christ died for. <laughs> you have you are being recruited against your maker. Remember Satan that deceived the whole world. Revelation chapter 12. The same has succeeded in deceiving many men of God. There's a message the Lord is giving to me, it's not complete yet. It's about socialism. Socialism. On a worldwide scale. And he told me that many of his pastors have been bought over. May the Lord help us. May the Lord deliver us. Let's move on. Look at Colossians 2, 1 verse 13 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 12. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So that it was the kingdom of Satan that was on earth. And God picked Abraham and out of Abraham he raised a nation for himself. And out of that nation a kingdom came forth. And that kingdom is a kingdom of his dear son so he picks people people who are predestinated and those who hear the gospel and obey the gospel he picks them into his kingdom he saves them he translates them from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god into the kingdom of his dear son first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 12 that ye would walk worthy you would Ye that ye would walk worthy of God, who had called you unto his kingdom. Remember, the church means ecclesia. 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 It means they called out. You have been called out of the world. Into the kingdom of Christ. Matthew chapter 13, 24 to 30. This is a bit long. This tells of the parable of the tares and wheat. We're not going to read it because of time. Who a 
actually rules the world. The parable of the chance and wheat tells us who is in charge of the world. Now let me tell you. As we see this world today, we see that a lot of things are wrong. Because Satan, to a very great extent, has a time and he has some level of oppression on earth. Consider the scriptures again. He is the God of this world, he is the prince of this world, he is the prince of the power of the, of the air. He is the one, he is a wicked one, under whose power is the world the whole world lieth under the power of the wicked one consider these things uh, who is in charge of this world who rules this world and let me tell you there are two kingdoms in this world the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil two kingdoms the kingdom of God have been established and we are being translated into the kingdom of God. From the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. We are being translated one by one, one by one. As many that are being saved. Those who are in the world, they are under the power of the power and the influence of the evil one, Satan. He rules them. He has taken over almost every sector of the society. Is in charge of politics. Is in charge of the pharmaceutical world. He has infiltrated even the church. The Antichrist. Masquerading himself as an angel of light. The same evil one. Has infiltrated technology. Today you can't even preach Christ. If Let me ask you. It, can you see anything on YouTube? Can you see anything on Facebook? On No. You'll be censored. Who is controlling AI, artificial intelligence? Who is in charge of chat GPT? If God is in charge of our governments, why will there be restrictions of Christians to this extent? There is a battle, there is a struggle to take to, to control. We, we are struggling. We are struggling. Until finally the Antichrist will be revealed. The lawlessness will continue to grow because wickedness shall abound. Wickedness will continue to abound. Until finally, it will get to be speak. Remember the parable of the tares and wheat. A man went to sow good seeds in his farm. And as he sowed, he went home. Verse 25, but while men slept. This is Matthew chapter 13, 25. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. This is what is happening today. You, we have a world that has been infiltrated by the devil and his angels. They are everywhere. Causing havoc everywhere in the world right now. What did the servant say? The servant said, why don't we go and uproot the weeds, uproot the tires from among the weeds? Jesus said unto them, verse 29, but he said, nay, no, lest while ye gather up the tares, you root up also the weeds with them. This word the evil one is here, but he has a time. I want to ask a question. If the devil rules this world, 
and God is in charge of his church. The devil is not in charge of the kingdom of God, the church. The church is the kingdom of God. We are the called out of the, out of the world. We are the called out. We are the ecclesia. The kingdom that has been prophesied, that started on the day of Pentecost. The kingdom did actually start on the day of Pentecost. It has been in heaven, but it came, the advent of the kingdom was on the day of Pentecost. That kingdom came and the prophecy of Jesus Christ that there were some of you who were here who will not die that will see the kingdom of God come down with power. That prophecy in Mark chapter 9 verse 1 came to pass. And they saw the kingdom came down with power. Jesus is the head of this kingdom. He is not Satan. Satan is not the head of this kingdom. And the church is one. The church is one. The church is a body of Christ. It, is, it comprises of those who the sins that are dead and those who are alive. Including the angels. They are part of the church. You don't become a member of God's kingdom the day you die. You, became a, you become a member of that kingdom the day you give your life to Christ. You don't become a member of the kingdom the day you, you receive the last judgment and you are pronounced guiltless, discharged and acquitted. It's not that day you become a member of that kingdom. It is the day you give your life to Jesus Christ. The day your name is written in the book of life. That book of life is a register of is a register of membership of the kingdom of God. Which kingdom do you belong to? Which one do you belong to? Do you belong to the kingdom of God or you belong to the kingdom of the devil? If you belong to the kingdom of God, do you live for the kingdom? Or you live all your life for this kingdom. Who rules your life? 2020, we saw the lockdown. Let's pray. So that the next one that is coming won't be more severe. Who is in charge of your life? If the devil is in charge of this world, if the devil rules over most of our politicians you have to choose who should be in charge of your life who rules your life does god reign over your life for as many as are led by the spirit of god are the children of god they are the sons of god as many as believed in his name he gave power to become sons of God to become the children of this kingdom have you believed in him do you believe and you still compromise your faith in Christ do you believe the gospel do you believe the gospel of this kingdom if you believe do you practice it do you live your life for this kingdom can you die physically for this kingdom or you will shrink from dying. Can you lay down your life for this kingdom? We have many soldiers of Jesus Christ who don't take their lives to the battle. They don't take their lives to the war front. They leave their lives at home. Their life is too precious. This is a kingdom, man, woman. This is about the kingdom of Christ. This is our kingdom. We have no other kingdom. Do everything possible to enter this kingdom. Do everything within your power to enter life. Do everything within your power to save your soul from destruction. Satan rules this world, but God is in charge of his church. But within the reign of the devil himself, there is a limit. God has set a limit before him. 
He has a time. And he knows that his time is short. Satan has been given a time to fill up his iniquity. To make up for his evil. So that his judgment can be totally righteous. Some people ask, why did God just kill Satan? Why did he not just imprison him? You don't know that the accusation upon God is great. And God is a just God. God is a righteous judge. He leaves him to make up for his evil. You complete sentence yourself to eternal destruction. You accuse God before his holy angels. He accused God. Carry out rebellion in heaven. He started his own politics in heaven. And with his tail, with his tail he threw to the earth one thorn of the stars of heaven. The accusation and the rebellion was great. He was driven down here. Come and fulfill the evil you started. He has a time. Don't be in his boat. That boat is sinking. That ship of Satan is sinking. Come out. And never share in his reward. Don't be under his leadership. Make up your mind to die for this kingdom. Make up your mind to lose anything and everything for this kingdom. Don't compromise your faith. We can't question God, but I tell you, we've been recruited. We've been placed in the world to make choices ourselves. To either choose the kingdom of God or choose the kingdom of the devil. Stop questioning the things you don't understand. I questioned some time ago and I almost lost my life and my salvation. Stop questioning. Follow the instructions of the Holy Spirit. Don't let your human weakness drive you away from this kingdom of God. We have a kingdom. And this kingdom will remain forever. It will never be destroyed. This is our kingdom. And we will do everything possible. Within the grace that God has given to us. To fight for this kingdom. This is the Bible. That was sustained. By the blood of the saints. And we must hand over this same gospel to the next generation. Pure. Without diluting this word that we received. This is a blood of the saints. They died for this Bible. They did everything possible within the grace that was supplied to them. To present the truth. And we will never ever joke with this truth we will hand over this truth and not compromise by the grace of God not by power not by might but by the spirit of God the zeal of the Lord will fulfill this in the lives of as many as have submitted to this kingdom in Jesus name if Satan takes over the heart of our politicians we will keep speaking the truth and keep telling them that they are on the path of destruction. Let's pray. God help us. Thy kingdom come, O Lord. Thy reign, O Christ, begin. Break with the iron rod, the tyrannies of sin. Thy kingdom come, O God.
establish your kingdom in our hearts. May your power rule and reign. Break with your iron rod the tyrannies of sin that rule of evil in the lives of your children that gives the devil the foothold to operate in their lives. May the Lord God Almighty release His power and His Spirit upon your life. Give you illumination in your heart. Translate you into His kingdom. As you make up your mind to follow Him, never to look back. May the power of the Lord help you to continue to the end in the name of Jesus. If you are in Christ, and the devil is oppress, oppressing you in one way or the other. Receive your freedom in the name of Jesus. Lord, give us true understanding. Help us to understand that we belong to this kingdom. And never to compromise our faith. May the blood of Jesus wash our hearts. Wash our minds. And give us true freedom in Christ. I pray for the body of Christ worldwide. That Lord, you will help them to stand strong. Help your people to be faithful to the end. We trust in you. We believe in you. That you will come again to snatch us away. Lord, help us to be worthy. Help us to be holy. Help us to be watchful to the end. In the name of Jesus Christ. I remember as many who have fallen. As many who put their hands to the plow. But looked back. Lord, Help the weak. Help the weak, self defeat hearted. Help the fallen, lift the dead. Revive the weak. Take away our lukewarmness, Lord, all over your church in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray that you expose as many who are wolves in sheep clothing, expose them and help your children to be liberated from their cage, their bondage, and their imprisonment in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for those you've been using to support this ministry. We pray that you continue to support their lives. Support them and help them to enter this kingdom and make it to heaven and into the new Jerusalem so that they can reap everything that you have prepared for them. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please share this video with someone. May the Lord God Almighty bless and uplift you as you keep supporting us in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching this message. Please subscribe to this channel. Rosanna e. E. May the Lord God Almighty lift you up and bless you abundantly in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. See you next time. Bye.